Solve mysteries that will make you question. Wait, 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 hold up. That wasn't the one I was watching. I wanted to watch this one because we didn't get to watch this one. Disturbing things I found on the internet. Volume eight. The more you say you're straight, the less straight you are. Dude, it's like the concept of uh, like a lot of pedos being the ones who like actively protest against pedophiles and like, you know, say they should die and all this different shit. And then, <laughs> then it turns out they're, they're one of them. You know, it happens all the time with that shit. I'm sure there's like, there's like a phrase or a word for that type of thing where they like, I guess projecting, right? I, I, I consider projecting. I know words, guys. I know English. I've 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 spoken English since I was two. Chao Mao, more little kitty in English, was a Chinese influencer and live streamer with a sizable following. For years, she had uploaded fashion and beauty themed content hypocrite. to her. I feel like hypocrites. Like, uh, it's such a like dirty word, but it really doesn't. I don't know. Hypocrite doesn't hold anything, because everyone's a hypocrite. You know. Everyone uh, said something that they um, didn't mean. Everyone has done something in their past that today they're like, oh, I, sh I wouldn't have done that now. You know, everyone's a hypocrite, but I don't know. I just don't like that word because I feel like it's just like a. Everyone acts like it's like a really, oh, I got you word, but everyone's a fucking hypocrite to some extent. A 670,000 loyal fans on Doya. TikTok sister app. Young, attractive, and successful, little Why kitty appeared to like be AI? living the type of existence most folks can only dream of. And with every post, she only seemed to become more and more popular, with netizens drawn in by her natural charisma and charm. She was only 25 years old, but she was already a social media expert, said one of little kitty's closest friends. She was kind and very funny in everything she did, both on Have we seen this one before? Off. But like most influencers, Little Kitty only let her adoring public see the highlight reel of her life. In the offline world, Little Kitty was Law Maoche, a young woman who struggled with depression. The bubbly and smiley Little Kitty that everyone knew and loved was little more than a persona that Maoche had I created. I think so. <clears throat> yeah, I think we've seen this story, but have we seen it from this video? Okay, I haven't seen those two, but I think I've seen to conceal her troubled reality. And that cheerful mask would occasionally slip, too, with some fans noticing the worrying marks that lined her wrists in this certain- This video is a month old. I definitely haven't watched this one, though, because I don't remember the Half-Life 2 thing, and I don't remember the confession thing. Photos. Even though Kitty had found some happiness through vlogging and streaming, she always seemed to fall back into the blues. That is, until 2019, when she began dating Zhao Ruolin, a basketball enthusiast with a small following on Duo Yin, whom she had fallen head over heels for. Duo Lin had a fan base, sure, but it was many times smaller than Kitty's. Though, of course, that never even crossed her mind. Kitty had finally found someone who could reignite uh -oh. the spark inside of her. Is it going to be a, a was more than thingy? enough. During their relationship, Kitty mentored Duo Lin and encouraged him to post more frequently to his Duo Yin page. She taught him how to create more engaging content, how to get more impressions, oh, no. and how to better spread his name online. All the while, she continuously promoted his page, sang oh, his praises, no. and collaborated with him on videos. Over time, this, Rowling's on- This right here is exactly why I'm so happy I found my wife before I became a, a YouTuber. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am I am not like a big YouTuber by any means, or a Twitch streamer by any means whatsoever. I'm, I'm basically a nobody. But still, but like, finding someone while you have a following, I can imagine would be insanely hard because like, you know, you don't know who you can trust. You don't know if you're going to find someone who's just wanting to be with you because of like what you do and who you are type shit. Or uh, someone might be dating you in order to just, you know, get connections with other people and then like social climb and shit like that. Man, dating's hard. I'm glad I don't have to do that shit anymore. Online presence grew until he reached a follower count of over 2 million people, yeah, people eclipsing suck. even little Kitty's following. It was around the time that he reached that milestone, in March 2021, that Ruolin took to his social media pages 
and dropped some staggering bombshells. He revealed to his entire audience that his now ex-girlfriend, Little Kitty, was an unstable wreck. Oh my God. That throughout their relationship, she had manipulated him, threatening to leap from rooftops whenever she didn't get her way. That she would often fake scars on her wrists using makeup for attention and sympathy. That she had oh cheated on him God. several times with rich men that she had met online. I'm assuming then, he's lying about all, all this, right? That little kitty was pregnant, and he feared the child wasn't his. And rather than handle all of this privately, he decided to announce this to the world, telling all of his fans that he couldn't take it anymore, and that he wanted nothing more to do with little kitty. So As I'm you can imagine, those are all Kitty's social media pages were flooded with negative comments, lambasting her and saying that she should leap from a rooftop and rid the world of her presence. Oh my god. But as we all know, there's more than one side to every story. And now feeling pressured to tell hers, Kitty took to her socials and made public what she had desperately wanted to keep private. According to Kitty, Roy Lin had cheated on her numerous times once he started to gain a following, oftentimes directly messaging his fans and inviting them to hook up. Oh Screenshots of some of those conversations have since become public released by Ew. the very targets he tried to seduce. Ew. Kitty also showed off close-ups of her scars, which were obviously real, and provided medical records that proved she was receiving treatment for clinical depression. Oh she stated God. that she had never been unfaithful to Roa Lin, that the child most certainly was his, and that she had even asked him to take a paternity test before the birth. Roa Lin had refused to do so. As a result, Kitty terminated the pregnancy. Ultimately, although her feelings for Roa Lin had always been 100% authentic, she felt that he had simply used her to grow his online presence. And that's why it sucks, man! Oh, God! Oh, man, dude, like, fucking dating and shit in, in like, today's time is gonna be a fucking mess. Oh, my God. Because of how, like, everybody is so obsessed with, like, views and, and attention and, you know, like, Instagram, TikTok... Because, like, everyone has a fucking TikTok. And I'm sure there's, like, uh, you know, millions of people that have, like, you know, 10,000 plus followers on TikTok, which, like, a lot of people are going to see as, like, a big deal. And there's going to be, like, so many relationships pro r r relationship problems that have to do with this shit. It's so gross, man. Several of Little Kitty's real-world friends spoke out in her defense. None spoke up for Ruo Lin. Although we may never know for certain which side of this argument was being more truthful, YouTuber, it's yeah. worth noting that Kitty was never the only one to provide- a YouTuber that's already a YouTuber and single. Those guys are weird. Those girls are weird. ...by evidence, backing up her version of events. Okay, I should- She I, also I was, dealt with the joke. situation with oh, more grace, some keeping of them her were cool. respectfully some of them were okay. and only revealing what was necessary to defend herself from Not real Lin's accusations. Though. Majority of them are this whole ordeal had a powerful impact on Kitty's state of mind. It didn't help that Royal Lin's fanbase continuously tuned into her live streams just to leave vulgar comments about her appearance and personality, calling her every name under the sun. A few months passed, and eventually, Kitty moved on and found herself in a relationship with another man named Lee. Unfortunately, this one was destined to end even more disastrously. Oh, good! I love that! I like that how this story doesn't just end there and it gets worse. Don't you guys love when that happens? Don't you like when a story is like really bad and then you're like, dang, if only this was worse! And then we just get smacked in the cock with this? Oh yeah, dude, hit me harder. Lee would use Kitty's bank account as his own personal piggy bank, and even scammed her into buying a house in his name. But that wasn't the worst of it. Are you talking? The one confirmed. Little Kitty's friends claimed that in October of 2021, she and Lee were spending some time alone together. At some point, Lee slipped something into Kitty's water, waited for her to fall asleep, and invited his friends over. The group then proceeded to- Oh! 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 Yowza! Wow! Holy shit! I was not prepared for that. Okay, I don't remember the story. Or at least all the details. 
Kitty's friends urged her to report the incident to the authorities, but she refused. Oh no. Regardless, Lee disappeared of his own accord and cut all communication with Kitty. Shortly thereafter, on October 14th, 2021, little Kitty began a live stream. Some say looking for support from her fans. Some say as an indirect way to grab the attention of either Ruo Lin or Lee. Whatever her motivation, those tuned in noticed that something was I feel like I got here at a weird Kitty. time. What do you mean? This is like the perfect time to show up to my stream. What are you talking about? She appeared completely <clears throat> burnt out and exhausted. And rather than being her upbeat, happy self, she instead addressed her audience in a quiet, sullen voice. Actually, it's kind of sad for the person that wants to date a YouTuber, influencer, or whatever, because the person is going to have trouble gaining their trust to try to actually love them. Well, it goes both ways. Like, that's the thing. It goes both ways because, number one, uh, a YouTuber who wants to date someone, like, if you... The thing is, that's why so many celebrities, for example, and YouTubers date within, like, their quote-unquote circle, as in people who have the same amount of following as they do. So then they don't get, like, there, there's an understanding there, right? Like, they both get it. You know, they're both at a, a specific level of attention where it's not like, you know, you're not going to have that weird bias dynamic of like, oh, you're the famous, uh, rich, uh, a, a attention person, and I'm just going to be the nobody that no one cares about or vice versa and stuff like that, you know? So, like, if... Uh, like, if, uh, uh, see for uh, 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 uh. This will likely be my last video. In my content, I appear. Also, trying to date a celeb like person, you have a perception going in. People uh like the thought of them, but not who they actually are. Yeah, very true. Like, oh my god, like people are so weirdly obsessed with youtubers i mean just i mean celebrities i'll just i'll just put a general sentence as celebrities and i'm like saying youtubers twitch streamers whatever and um when you meet them like i had that same like weird view of like oh these guys these people are so incredible they're like above humans they're like gods and then you meet them and you're like oh my god they're actually terrible people i don't like any of these people that, that's how my experience went. Like, so many YouTubers that I met, I'm like, oh, dude, oh, I can't wait to meet the... Oh, you're an asshole. Good. Oh, that's great. Glad. Oh, here, let's meet this guy. Oh, you're an asshole, too. You only care about views and money, and you, you're not, like, an actual human. You're just, like, a, 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 a lizard person. Oh, that's good. That's, that's how it feels. Happy. But that's all for show. As many of you know, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff recently. And to be honest, I can't take it anymore. The stream continued on, with Kitty half-heartedly interacting with the chat. That is, until she let out an exasperated sigh, and muttered, He's still not here yet. It was at that point that Kitty brought an object into frame. Oh, I remember a clear this. plastic bottle filled I remember with a this. dark brown liquid. I remember this. She told her viewers it was filled with a pesticide, and that she was going to drink it. I remember this part. At this point, thousands what of people- What about Elvis? He's a fucking alien. Like, what do you mean? I met him, worst person ever. We made a podcast together. I hated every second of it. Worst dude. I, like, honestly, worst guy ever. Don't ever talk to him. <laughs> Terrible. We're tuned into the stream, and whilst many begged for her to reconsider and get some rest, it's always the negative voices that stand out. And this being the internet, <clears throat> hundreds of people were egging her on, telling her to chug down the liquid and get it over with quickly. Classic. Just go ahead and do it, wrote one viewer. Stop wasting everyone's time. Dude, don't don't you this is why I love the internet so much, man. Like the the anonymity of it is so fucking like uh terrifying because, you know, like you're literally a random number on the internet. You, no one knows who you are. You're literally completely anonymous. You can say whatever crazy shit you want to say and get away with it. Like just look at my, look at the YouTube comment sections, right? 
Like, look at some shit that is said in the chat randomly. Like, people will pop in, say the most batshit insane, horrible stuff you could ever possibly think of, and then just walk away and do it to someone else. You know? Just look at Twitter. Or, sorry, X. Go there and just scroll down. Like, you literally don't even have to go anywhere to find the most batshit insane takes ever to be made on this planet. Like, it's, it's insane. Some of them may have thought they were being funny. Others perhaps thought that Little Kitty was joking and that the bottle was full of cola. Royal Lin's fans may have meant what they typed. Kitty read some of those negative comments aloud. They were nothing new. She had received countless hurtful messages in recent months. But that evening, they didn't fuel her sadness. They fueled her resolve. Appearing the happier she had all stream, Little Kitty raised her bottle, almost as if toasting her viewers, and thanked them all for watching before calmly drinking down the liquid in one go. She held up the near-empty bottle, showed off the last few drips inside, and proclaimed, Wow, that tasted awful. Yeah, I remember this. I remember this part. Shortly thereafter, Kitty's calm demeanor melted away. Haha, <laughs> you really did it, wrote one viewer. Good for you, wrote another. Still on stream, Kitty began drinking glass after glass of water, before clutching at her throat and gasping heavily. The live stream then abruptly ended. Uh. Many assumed that the stream had just been a stunt, but the following day, they found out that little Kitty wasn't bluffing. Media publications announced that she had passed <clears throat> away after ingesting diluted pesticide. After ending the stream the night prior, Kitty had immediately called 120, China's medical emergency number. She explained her situation, and an ambulance quickly arrived at her home in Shandong. But it was too late. People are so her insides sick had already been damaged beyond repair, and she I mean, who was it? Um. Oh my god. Who was the streamer that, uh... Like, everyone was, like, laughing at him and making fun of him for him having, like, a crazy mental break? And, like, Keemstar had a big part of it as well, where he was just, like bashing the shit out of him and making video after video after video. Etika, yeah. Etika, it's like that situation. Or, uh, yeah, Wreckful too. Wreckful's a good example as well, where, like, people are literally constantly bashing them, telling them just to go ahead and do it. You know, no one gives a shit about you. Like, just blaring them with all these horrible, horrible comments. And, like, like Wreckful's a good, like, they're both a good example of that, is how... No one with a bad mental state should ever be on the internet. Ever. Because all it's going to be is full of people telling you to do it. Like, that that's really what it is. It's so fucked up. <clears throat> it's, it's so disgusting, man. ...while receiving treatment at a local hospital. She was then transported to a funeral home in Jinning City. Her family arrived, and she was cremated. Which brings us to ghost marriages, or yim marriages as they're known in the Middle Kingdom, a practice which involves both a bride and a groom, neither of them alive. Wait, what? During a yim marriage, the remains of both the soon-to-be husband and wife. Oh, okay, wait. Wait, this isn't over? Wait, huh? whom, more often than not, were strangers in life, are brought together to be married in a formal ceremony, during which their bodies are buried together. This ceremony is performed for several reasons. Firstly, because superstitious families believe that anyone who passes without a partner is doomed to spend the afterlife alone, and that this can bring bad luck to their still living relatives. God, why do people care so much about the fucking afterlife, dude? Holy shit. And secondly, because families with more traditional values consider it shameful to have an unwed daughter. And thirdly, because some families wish to adhere to certain cultural norms, such as how a younger brother shouldn't marry before their elder brother. So if Big Brother should pass unexpectedly before he could wed, a yim marriage could solve that issue. Culture a lot of times. It's important to note that yim marriages have been outlawed in China. I found out Tom Brady's wife was a witch, that's cool. <clears throat> that's surprising, that's pretty cool though. Yeah, but it's like, I don't, I don't know. I Like, I get to an extent because it, like, quells people's fear of, like, 
death and they like they believe that oh when when you die that like oh at least at least I got something to look forward to why why who cares you know like and I want to stress that the practice is condemned by the vast majority of the population bro and if just it because goes me. black I'm gonna be heated as fuck dude yeah when I'm dead and all I see is this black I'm like shit where's God what is this garbage? Because I'm totally going to be aware. <laughs> My shut off brain will just be aware of everything that's happening. Just throw me in the trash. Dude, that, that's me. That's Neither of I the want. deceased can agree to the wedding. Unfortunately, it's far from unheard of for a family to sell the body of their daughter to be married to another family's dead son. Feel the fear of the unknown, death is unknown. Also, what can you do? We all die from something. There's nothing we can do about it. That's what I'm saying. Like, why care so much about what happens after the fact? Like, people waste, like, what, 60 to 70% of their lives on shit that has to do with after they die. Instead of just, like, focusing on shit that their real life is about. Like, focusing on their life that's now. Instead of spending, like... So much of their fucking life. Oh, maybe if I waste 90% of my life, I'll get guaranteed to go to heaven. It's like, bro, you just wasted 90% of your life. <laughs> like, <laughs> That idea, that idea is pretty cool. Because, I mean, that makes sense. Like, that that's actually makes sense, right? <clears throat> Chat, no one tell- wait, tell me what? Huh? What? Given China's population imbalance due to their former one-child policy, it is almost so exclusively women Shut who up! are sold. Shut up! My mic's fine! I'm not muted! Shut up! Often, you're all- you're all deaf! Take the earplugs out of your stupid ears! ...sums of money. This is particularly common in Shandong, where there's a thriving black market for female corpses. It's a bigger business than most people realize too, with the average sale price being somewhere between 50,000 to 70,000 yuan, about 7,000 to 10,000 dollars. It's so profitable in fact, that certain entrepreneurs will go around cemeteries and dig up product to sell. Ew. As a result, some wealthy families choose to bury their loved ones in concrete coffins fitted with CCTV cameras. <laughs> that way, they can make sure that their daughter is still oh my god, what the fuck? The rare, there have been documented cases of gangs murdering women specifically to sell them as ghost brides. What the fuck? After all, <clears throat> the fresher the bride, the higher the price tag. Ew. And in the minds of the most depraved businessmen, it's smarter to just create their own inventory. There are even names for the three tiers of brides that can be purchased from such salespeople. The top tier are called fresh ones. Negotiations for a fresh one can begin mere minutes after the bride has passed. Or in some cases, while she's still alive, fighting for her life. Uh. Then there are wet bodies. Those between a few weeks and a few months old. The lowest quality brides are known as dried meat. What Unfortunately, the fuck? when it comes to yin marriages, Ew. even human ashes aren't off limits. And being young, beautiful, and unmarried at the time of her end, Little kitties could be sold for a hefty sum, especially considering her fresh Is status. Is the fourth jerky? All right. Her parents would never agree to such a sale, here. though. They were modern, well-educated people, oh, not God. the type of superstitious folk who would subscribe to such a practice. And so, while her loved ones waited outside the crematorium, three staff members at her funeral home, surnamed Xiao, Shang, and Lei, secretly filled an urn with powder and stole little kitty's real ashes. Oh my god. Safe to say, this wasn't their first rodeo. They soon found a buyer for kitty's remains, but the $11,000 deal fell through when their prospective client backed out at the last minute. Following this, they contacted a second potential customer, who not only backed out, but ended up reporting the trio to the authorities. When apprehended, the wife of one of the men reportedly said to an officer, What's the problem? It's not a big deal. Thankfully, little Kitty's ashes have since been returned to her family in Hunan. The story of little Kitty has since sparked a wave of debate across the Chinese-speaking internet, 
with many discussing whether those who egged her on to drink the pesticide should face legal repercussions. Well, they can't. Like, what do you mean? They're like anonymous people on the internet. Damn it, it's important. Fine. That, that is not my future. I'm not going to be buried in a grave. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, that, that's the best motto to live by right there. That's, that's the best motto to live by right there. Frank Reynolds got it right. Kitty's parents tried to take action against one user in particular, who left an inordinate amount of cruel messages. A user with the screen name, You're the Most Precious. His basketball profile Ew. picture suggests that he was a fan of Rua Lin's. However, other than Doi Yin deleting his account, their case against the user didn't go anywhere. Why is the three death men so expensive, sell though? Remains. Exactly, bro. Exactly. That's why I say throw me in the trash. Like, dude, it's so stupidly expensive. I can't find any information about their sentencing online. To die. At like, least not in English. Isn't that just crazy? I hope they paid for their actions. Oh, you died? Oh, sorry, your entire family is going to be in debt for the next five years. The like, what? And I hope little Kitty can finally rest in peace. She deserves that much, at least. Need to get fucking life insurance and shit? Like, bruh. Like, even in death. This topic includes in images death, that may disturb some viewers. We're if in you'd debt, like to skip man. to the next entry, you can do so using the timestamps on the progress bar. Uh, I ain't a bitch, okay? I can handle. Released in 2004 to both critical stuff. and commercial success, Half Life 2 is still considered one of the most influential and groundbreaking games of all Great time. Game. Developed and published by the legendary Valve Corporation. This second installment in the Half-Life series was originally intended to have a much darker, grittier, and overall more somber tone. Traces of that can still be found in the end product, especially in areas like Ravenholm. But perhaps one of the creepiest things you can encounter in the game. Dude, I'll be honest, Half-Life 2 has one of the scariest areas in a game that I've ever played. Like, is for this. real. Oh, Corpse this is oh, oh, oh. If you're familiar with Source okay. Engine games, you'll most certainly have met this fellow at some oh, point. Oh, okay. With regards to Half Life Wasn't 2. Wasn't this proven you're... fake, though? Ooh, savage burn. Wasn't this proven fake? Thank you so much, Goop. Thank you so much, Goop, for the gift. Or is it actually a real? By many of these okay. models strewn unceremoniously throughout the campaign. I thought it was proven fake. They're generally Maybe used not. as props for some eerie environmental storytelling. The fallen humans that you pass on your journey, who've met with a variety of terrible fates, positioned in ways that let the player fill in the blanks with their imagination. I thought it was. I, I but thought far it was more disturbing fate. than any NPC's hypothetical backstory we'll is the disturbing reality of this model itself. Despite Half-Life 2 having cutting-edge graphics for the time it was released, something about this model's face always seemed to be a bit too realistic. And while browsing through the r/creepygaming subreddit, I came across this SpongeBob meme, which hinted that. Has anyone told you that you remind them of X Code? I'm not sure who that is, but I've never uh, heard someone. The say texture that, no. may have an extremely dark origin, one that most people didn't know about. And after doing a little digging, I found out that was true. Corpso One's facial texture okay. had been taken from a real-life photo, a close-up shot of a man's body, one whose face had been completely burnt off. For obvious reasons, I can't show that photo here on YouTube. Oh, okay, so it is real. It's pretty much identical to the in-game model's facial texture. The only difference being that in the real photo, the man still has one of his eyes mostly intact. For the in-game texture, an artist simply duplicated the man's empty eye socket. Perhaps they thought keeping a natural lifeless eye in the game was a step too YouTuber far. YouTuber who smokes hella weed, similar hair and vibe? Couldn't be me. That doesn't sound anything like me. From what I can find online, the photo was taken from a medical textbook used to teach students about burns. The images used in such textbooks are sourced from all over the place. What was this the has led many people to speculate life? about. Was it called Raven? Raven Hole? Raven something? The place with all the head crabs and shit? Who this man was in life, and how he came it's to meet scary. such a terrible fate. And strangely, despite the man's face being completely burned off, his neck chest, and even hair remain undamaged. It's hard to think up an explanation for how this man, whoever he was, could have sustained such a wound accidentally. It almost feels like the burning has to have been done to him intentionally, 
and I've seen many people repeating the same explanation online. That he was the victim of a mafia killing, and that they used a blowtorch to melt his face off and make an example of him. Uh. That would explain why his hair is intact. Mm. But even though that story keeps getting repeated as if it were fact, there's absolutely no evidence that this man met with foul play, other than the strange condition of his body. Personally, I think there's a more innocent explanation. Yeah, innocent is the right word to use. Many people donate their remains to science, and many of those are used to teach med students. I think it's far more likely that a medical practitioner took one of those cadavers and torched the facial area specifically as a teaching example. At Hell least, yeah, dude. I hope that's the case. Dude, what was the idea behind that? Hey guys, you want to see what happens when we burn this guy's face off? Wouldn't that be so cool if we just like burnt his face off? Yeah, but like, what what would that what would that teach us? What nothing? But wouldn't that be sick? Like just seeing someone's face just get completely burnt? Ah, oh, yeah, dude. Since the photos online think oh, that's what that happens. It burns. Oh, be traced back to twenty eleven. That means that some employee at Valve must have scanned a copy of a textbook and imported the texture into the game, possibly without asking permission from the book's publisher and definitely without asking permission from the deceased or his relatives. <clears throat> Half-Life 2 had a notoriously rushed development cycle, so this may have been done as a time-saving measure. But even if all the right boxes had been ticked, and the image was a royalty-free stock photo, Valve still didn't tell any of their player base about the texture's origin, leaving them to interact with a real body in Half-Life 2, roleplay as him in Gary's mod, and use him in fan projects, most of them ignorant about the texture's less than wholesome backstory. That being said, I suppose it's possible that nobody at Valve even realised the disturbing origin of the texture themselves. That's to say, it may have come in a third-party asset library without its origin being explicitly noted. Gross. Off the top of my head, I can't think of many games that feature real photos of dead people. Hong Kong 97, Batman the Enemy Within, but many others have used morbid references for their models. <clears throat> for instance, Several of Bioshock's splicer enemies were based on World War I soldiers who underwent pioneering facial surgeries. Mortal Kombat 11 developers looked at obliterated bodies to design their infamous fatalities, okay, well that leaving one sense. staff member needing therapy. Well, that and makes for sense. Valve themselves, their development team on Left 4 Dead 2 would create a nightmare folder full of stomach-churning real images, but found this type of research to be so gratuitous and unnecessary that they didn't make use of any of them in-game. Dude, Instead of basing would, their zombie design. That would suck so much, like, to be a game developer of, like, a horror game and you need to study, like, grotesque shit. Bleh. It's on things like Bleh. housing insulation and potato skins. So it seems Valve did learn their lesson in the end. And you can be sure that if Half-Life 3 ever does get announced, this texture will almost certainly not be making a reappearance. Half-Life 3 is never coming, guys. Unfortunately, Pepe this hands. isn't the only texture in Half-Life 2 based on a real person Valve with a sad backstory. Three. Yeah, it's true. Though not directly ripped from real-life photos, <clears throat> many of the human characters in game oh, are modelled on actual people, mostly actors, Valve employees and their families, all of whom are credited in-game. All of them, that is, except for the facial reference for Eli Vance. While searching for inspiration for the character's face, Scary. Valve's graphic designer, Randy Linden, passed a homeless man holding a sign saying he was looking for work. Since the man had a, quote, interesting appearance, <laughs> Randy asked him to come back to the studio and have his face scanned into the game in return for a few bucks. For a the few developers bucks. never even took note of the man's name, for a few and he was bucks. never credited in any of the games he appeared what in. The fuck? Despite being immortalized in one of the most legendary games of all time, we still don't know who this man is. Come on, bro! It makes you wonder whether he's That's even aware of how well known his face has become. Whoever he is. I hope he's still out there somewhere, and doing okay. That's a, yeah, actual scam. God damn, dude. Just grabbing a random dude. Hey, can we take a picture of you for a couple bucks? We're just gonna use it and make millions and millions and millions of dollars off of it. Is that cool? <clears throat> R slash confessions. A okay. subreddit. Where Am I going inside of like a butthole right now? Like, what is this? People use throwaway accounts to share their deepest and darkest secrets. Though more often than not, the posts either revolve around personal dramas or cheating spouses. But every so often, you'll stumble upon a truly dark revelation. Like this post, made by an anonymous user ten months ago. 
I know the person who possibly committed an unsolved double murder. Ugh. So I'll start by saying this. I'm Thank not entirely you. sure that this is true, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> My neighbour of gift. two years is a retired Delta Force officer. He's been through some shit in terms of war and its ramifications as far as PTS and paranoia goes. He can barely walk, and I work at a grocery store down the street. I do little jobs for him, bring him things from the store, and stuff like that. One day, after I come back from the store, he starts talking to me about where he's from. Are you talking? Basically, he was adopted by these two rich folks and moved into their house with another foster child whom he still calls his stepbrother. This town he lived in and grew up in was your basic industry town and didn't have much to offer. Therefore, like most small town people, he resorted to drinking and doing drugs. Dude, that sentence right there is the most like relatable sentence ever. Therefore, like most small town people resorted to drinking and doing drugs. I would say 90% of the people in my uh, school, in my small town, ended up just becoming huge druggies, going to prison and doing some crazy well, shit. He tells me that when he was a freshman or sophomore in high school, he was dating this one girl that he really liked. I'm not going to give her a name for reasons that'll soon become obvious, but she went to his school and was quite pretty and popular. In his words, she was the only girl I ever wanted to be with in high school, and I finally got my chance. Hmm. One day, after they'd had an evening of fun, she left to go back home. Sex? But this was a lie that she told him, so she could meet up with another guy at the park. Me and my friends happened to go oh. to that park too. He told me, and we see her with this popular guy that I hated. Oh! I went up to the car, shot her in the head with my twenty-two. Uh, 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 what? That escalated. That escalated. And shot him in the chest so he wouldn't die quickly, <sighs> so he could sit there and bleed out while I mocked him. I defensively sat there and went along with all of this BS. But then, he brought out the evidence. Items which he had grabbed from the car that night before he and his friends took off. Now, mind you, I thought this was absolute bull. What a reasonable man! He's a very straightforward guy, and I believe he's an honest guy too. I guess because he really has nothing to lose, considering he's dying of three types of cancer. But he's never talked like that to me so intimately. Especially about something so real and crazy. Fast forward two weeks. Wait, you're was telling me he's never talked to you about killing someone before? Nice. Come on. Harpsichord, thank you so much for the gift. Yeah, where did the three different types of cancer come from? I'm not gonna lie, chat. Starting to feel a little, little, uh, little goofy. The story's starting to feel a little goofy. Goop! Thank you so much for the tier one. Watching one of those unsolved crime documentaries on YouTube, curious if anything he said rang true. I have to say though, everything lined up to a T. It only got worse when this popular documentary, viewed by hundreds of thousands of people, told me the exact <clears throat> evidence taken from the car. All the same items I had recently been shown by my neighbour. Right, I don't know what the, to do with me. this information. Every show documentary me. I've watched on the internet shows me the evidence. No! Thank you so much for five. Thank you. My neighbor took from the car the things he's kept in his house all these years. Thank you so much. This happened many decades ago, and I truly don't know what to think of it. Why did he tell me all this? Why would he make it up? Why would he have all of those missing pieces of evidence that dozens of documentaries say are missing? My only thought at this point is for some reason he's obsessed with this case and constructed all of the evidence to make it look real. <clears throat> but honestly, I believe he did it. All right. I think he genuinely told me the truth, because at this point, he has nothing to lose. Michigan. How do I deal with okay, this? Okay, I, I think... Okay, there's enough time to actually show evidence. So, all right, let this, let this story cook. Uh, thank you so much, Harpsichord, uh, for gifting again. Thank you so much. But um, let this story cook. It's starting to feel a little bit goofy. 
Started to feel a little bit like, uh, all right, all right, kind of, kind of not real, but uh, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yes. Going to the police won't do anything, and he's always been good to me, paid me a lot of money, and helped me out of bad situations. I'm not gonna believe I'm a bad person for holding on to this knowledge. Yeah, it's starting to feel like but an I urban legend, want but some we'll, we'll let it cook. We'll let it cook. to feel in this kind of situation, when I very well may be the only person holding on to the information that two innocent families have been searching for, for years. Please don't judge. I just feel weird about hearing this from him. It all lines up so well, but he's always been great to me. And like I said, maybe it's not true, but there are just too many coincidences. <clears throat> Unsurprisingly, the comment section was inundated with questions about the case. What were the names of the victims? Where exactly had the incident taken place? And what was the evidence that the old man was keeping? Since the original poster, OP, was remaining tight-lipped, the good people of Reddit began conducting their own investigation to See? figure out the full story. See, that's exactly what, when I start saying, like, this is bullshit, is when the OP person doesn't, like, just say, hey... <laughs> Oh! Oh, we- Oh! 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 I didn't even know I had a thing for that. There's an alert for when we reach our goal? That's cool. Thank you so much, Atep! ASAP! For 10 gifted subs! Holy shit. 15 all together. ASAP! ASAP! Thank you so much! Holy shit! Now we gotta make the goal 420? Alright, I'll change that. I'll make sure to change that. Jesus. And if true, to bring this old man to justice. If the OP wasn't going to act on the confession, they were. But yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I was saying that uh, I feel like it's stupid that OP was not, didn't just say, hey, there's the evidence. This is the documentary I was talking about. This is where things line up. You know, he's just like, hey. You guys want to hear a crazy Shut story? Up, bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> After all, this certainly wouldn't have been the first time that someone had made a dark confession on Reddit that turned out to be true. <laughs> Perhaps thinking that he shouldn't have opened up this can of worms, OP went on to delete the entire threat, likely in an effort to sweep his neighbor's past under the rug and stop this search effort. An effort which he certainly hadn't anticipated. Rot row. Still. That didn't stop the most determined web sleuths from carrying on with their detective work. And soon, it became apparent which unsolved case Opie's neighbor had been involved in. User PReal420 made a separate post on RBI. Today I stumbled upon a post on r slash confessions. What's RBI? The OP had a throwaway, and the post was just deleted less than 15 minutes ago. Oh, OP using the power of the internet to solve real world problems. He should turn in his neighbor, who had confessed to a double murder. Upon researching the little bits of information he gave, I discovered he was talking about the Westside Park murders that happened in Muncie, Indiana in 1985. I guess I'm asking if that post can be retrieved and traced back to its source. This seems very legit, but could be an elaborate troll. Either way, I believe it's something that should at least be looked into. The Westside Park slings. In September oh. of 1985, Kimberly Dell and Ethan Dixon were both slain in Muncie, Indiana, Hold in the up. exact same fashion described by OP in his post. They were both found lifeless inside Ethan's Volkswagen Rabbit Wait, hatchback pig, react with harder. the engines. Uh, oh! Oh! What? Still running. Several Ow. items had reportedly been taken from the scene. Ow. Witnesses reported seeing three individuals leaving the park at around the time Ow. of the incident, and this sketch of a possible suspect was released to the public. Despite a thorough investigation, though, that was too the hard. case unfortunately went cold. Whoa! What the fuck? What is this stuff? What the hell? We got the giga alert. Jesus Christ, dude! Twenty get what the hell? That's like, what, 35 altogether? Jesus. My God. What the hell? SEP! What is with all the subs, SEP? What is going on? What is this? 
This pause looks like my dad. It is. Your dad's the murderer. That's what this whole that's, that's what this whole stream has been about this whole time. It's it's actually an intervention. We need we need to talk to your dad. We need to get him arrested. This is him. SF! What is with all the subs, SF? What's going on? Thank you. Jesus. Other Reddit users began to comment under P Reels post, stating that they had contacted the what? Princess Lemon Drop with five! Jesus! Y'all really love- you guys love murder! Damn! Princess Lemon Drop, thank you so much for five gifted subs, damn! Law enforcement in Muncie, and brought the confession to their attention. Piril himself even contacted the FBI. Unfortunately, they still haven't heard back from them. As such, the authenticity of OOP's yeah, post rich, remains uncertain. We have some Jeffrey Bezos in chat Given tonight. the vagueness of the original post, it is completely Harpsichord, possible that this was all so just a tasteless for the resub. But it's also completely possible that said you vagueness like you was smile? strategic. And that no, you don't. You, you, guys, you guys do not like seeing me smile. You, you like seeing me in, in, in guttural pain. You want me on the ground in a beetle, beetle position just, just sucking my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> that this was a genuine confession. After all, the real perp has to have been someone's neighbor. Why not OP's? Until we have Okay, so it was just... So I feel like the story is bad. Back from law enforcement, or some new developments arise. <clears throat> all we can do is wait for an update online. And speculate. All right, so that, that that's just like all right, yeah, okay. I, that that story is just a nah. That that that's just a goof. That's a goofer. That last story is a goofer. I personally don't believe it. That's just a coincidental situation. I mean, now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way You know I will miss you I hope you return Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.